All right, everyone, this is our next dashboard, and this dashboard is very, very simple to create. But if you don't really watch it carefully, it might look some kind of complicated to you. Over here, what we have is actually non compliance SLA ticket and compliance SLA tickets. I'm going to show you what is compliance, what is SLA for you to understand the terminology a lot is very important. Okay, if you look at here, we have this to be, or uh, this number 7,000 to be for that of non-compliance and 7,245 is actually for compliance and we have the year over year change right here. One beautiful thing about this is that we're going to show our DAX skill a lot in this particular project. So if you look at this one, uh, it's actually telling us about the year over year change between 2017 and 2016. And what happens if we have the year here, which is the first year of their service selected? We don't have year over year change. We actually have 0% for the year over year change. And over here, it says 2016 has no previous year. Select another year to see result. So by the time we go ahead and select like 2020 here, it's going to compare that to 2019. And we have the year over year change right here. Beautiful, right? So let's get started before we get started remember we have this yesterday when we're transforming our data so we got something created on this particular part i just have highlighted so it says the average resolution time is 4.5 days the client would like to create a new column where if resolution time is above 3.5 days it is outside sla so and again if it is below it's gonna be it's gonna be within SLA. So this is exactly what it is. And uh, what I want you to understand there is this. If we go to our data here before we start creating, you just need to know all this. So we go to the ticket table. Okay. Inside our ticket table, we have this column here that we created in Power Query, if you still remember it. So we have within and uh, we have outside SLA. First of all, let us look at what is SLA. It's very important for you to understand what is SLA. SLA means service level agreement. Service level agreement. So I'm going to go back here. So now we hit the right well, PBIX. So we are here. So I'm going to actually create what I call uh, compliance. Compliance S L A and uh, non compliance S L A. So, which means we are changing the term, you know, within and outside. So, where we have compliance S L A means within S L A. Where we have non compliance S L A means outside S L A. So you need to understand this terminology before we actually get started. So first of all, let us look at what is compliance SLA. Compliance SLA refer to whether a service or process complies with the agreement upon standards or requirement outside the SLA. So it's almost the same thing with when we use, you know, within SLA. So if you were to actually say what is within SLA, you're going to say, Within SLA generally means, um, you know, that a service or a task is completed or delivered within the time frame specified in the SLA. So this is exactly what it is. So with this understanding, we can now go ahead and, you know, start creating our measure. You understand? So when you receive a data, the very first thing you do is to make your research about the industry, understand it better before you start creating anything. So we can now go over here, right click and uh, create a new measure. So what we're going to create right now is actually, you know, uh, exclude the compliance or within SLA and exclude the non-compliance or outside SLA in the measure before we can actually create our year over year change. So I'm gonna call this one compliance SLA. Right, so equals. The very first thing I'm gonna do is to actually assume that I don't have the total ticket created. I'm gonna show you two different ways to have this done. So using the controls here. So with the controls, I'm not gonna give it a table for now. I wanna filter 
the uh, ticket table, filter the rows, and only um, limit it to within SLA. So I'll use the filter function here. So with the filter function, the filter function is looking for a table, and the table is actually our ticket table, this one here. So with comma, where can we see outside SLA and within SLA? That is gonna be inside our what? Inside our um where was that? Um resolution status we created. So resolution status. So where it is equal to within. So within SLA. So once we've done that, you can go ahead and close. So let's see. So hit our enter key to get it. So this is one way to get it done. I think we have an error somewhere. Let's find out where that is. Okay, the error we have is that we've not closed this here with double quotation. So we've just done that. So we're gonna take two of this here out. So hit enter key. So now we have this. Always format it with comma separator for thousand to be some kind of a very clear to you. So we're gonna push this one in now. So this helps us to create the compliance SLA or within SLA. So the next thing is again is for we to create for our non-compliance SLA. So we're gonna create another measure over here. So new measure. So for now, I'm not gonna use this method to actually run this. We can use calculate function to get it done. So we call this one non-compliance. SLA. So using the calculate function over here. So already we have our ticket calculated. So we just want to filter down to where we have our, you know, our resolution status to be outside. SLA. So don't forget to close this. So by the time we hit enter, we're going to have the same thing. This is just exactly what it is. So remember, over here we have controls already used in case you want to know how that is. So if I come here now, we use control to calculate this. So that was exactly what we did here when we assumed that we have never had this one calculated. We use the controls over here and we use, the, we use filter to filter down to where it is within. So we've gotten the, our next one, which is non-compliance right in here. So format it and bring it into a card. Okay, we have both of them here. The next thing now is to create the ear over ear change. So I'm going to take them to the right hand corner. So we actually make them to look good after all. But for now, let's just focus on the logic. So we need a slicer. On this slicer, we just need the ear over here. Going to a calendar table. We just choose the ear. So I'm going to change it to drop down. All right, so we have the drop down. There is no need for me to keep the header. I've taken it off. So if I select 2016, it's fine. 17, 18, 19, you know. Now this is our current compliance and non-compliance SLA. Whatever we select from here. I'm saying this for you to understand what we're going to be doing next. So when we select anything, it's our current. So we want to select the previous, which means if I am in 2019, I want to see the previous year before 2019. 19 for me to create my um what i call it my caption later after all and as well for we to actually create our year over year change so now you have understood that let us move this to the top right here so just keep it here for now okay now we're going to create year over year change for both compliance and non-compliance we create a new merger right So we call this one compliance um, SLA year over year percentage. Okay, now how do we go about this? 
So I told you we have the current selection. Whatever we select from the slicer is the current one. So we want to select something from the slicer that gives us the current one, which is 2020. When we select it from the slicer, we give us 2020. I want to see the year before 2020, which is 2019. So what do we do for the first time? We create a variable here and uh, we create an underscore and we call this one current year um, within SLA. Oh, current year, okay, current, current selection. So you can name it anything you like. Current selection will be Whispering, um, okay, let's do, let's do current, compliance, SLA equals, so we bring in our compliance SLA here, so we create another variable here. So this variable we take all, we take the previous. So which is gonna be underscore previous. SLA. So equals. Now to get it done, we have to actually go back one year, right? So the very first uh, function to use is the calculate function. So we change the filter context right now. So we're going to get a uh, compliance SLA here. So we want to go back one year. And remember, we have two functions that could actually do this for us. So we have the date add function to get it done for us, which is date add. We have same period last year function as well to have this done. So we have talked about this in our you know, time intelligence function section. So where did it add can go, uh, can offset by, uh, by one, by two, by three, by four, by five, both for uh, day, uh, month, year, and uh, quarter, exclude um, weeks, right? So while this one here just offset by one year. So if you know the difference, you know, where you can actually use them. So right now, they can both be used in this particular situation. So which are we gonna use? We can just choose one and we use it. So I'm gonna use my uh, date add here. So with my date add, it's looking for date. So if I give it the date, I'm gonna choose the date for my calendar. Let me scroll here, we go. Then now with my comma, it's asking for number of interval. Please always pay attention to the intelligence right here for you to get exactly what it is that you want. So minus one now, if I have my comma, it's asking me for, do I want to minus a day, month, quarter, or year? So I need the year, I go for the year. And now I'm done. I can go ahead and close. The dashboard you're watching is part of our full video course on DAX. This course has taken you from the scratch to the advanced level on how to write DAX and think, you know, when it comes to writing logic to actually pull information from data. So this course will definitely help you to do that. If you're very interested, this is the right course for you. So using the link we have provided for this course, you can actually check out our other courses right here and whatever suit you need, please sign up. This shift enter we close this. So which means when we select 2020, 20, it's going to calculate for 2019. That is it. So we have this. The next thing is for we to return this and make sure we create our division between the two variables. And how do we go by this one? So we do return. So under the return here, we want to actually, first of all, use the error handling in case there is some kind of division by zero. So what do I do in that case? I'm going to use the if function. So if is blank. So it's checking if underscore current compliance is blank or underscore previous compliance SLA is blank. So if it's blank, what are we checking? We're checking underscore. So in case you don't know why I'm using underscore, let me show you the reason why I'm using underscore. If I want to see uh, current, 
when I click on C on my keyboard, it gives me all the function that has to do with what with C. If I tap U again, it's giving me this. And uh, it might take you a little time to get to your variable. So to make it easy, start your variable name with underscore. When you just click on underscore, it only gives you the list of all the variables you have. Sometimes you might have like 20 variables. You don't have to start searching for them one after the other. So now if current SLA is actually blank, then what do we do? We close it and we use the all function all operator here. Shift enter to indent it. Underscore, you know, previous compliance SLA is blank. So we should have used is blank first. Let me remove it. So we check is blank again, is blank, underscore previous, then we close it and hit our comma. If the result is true that they are all blanks, we want to actually return blank or we can decide to return zero. But right now we have just returned blank. So if the result is false, that is when we're going to go ahead and actually do what brought us here. So isn't the divide function? So we're going to actually, first of all, subtract current compliance SLA, which is this one, subtract it from underscore previous, then divide by the previous. So with this, we are good to go. Uh, for the alternate result, you need, that one is optional. I would love to put it sometime. So if you see it, it says alternate result, which means if there's a division by zero as well within this. So if you want to return blank or you want to return zero, let us go with zero. So now we go ahead and close this. Finally, we close our if function. So if I hit my enter key right now, that is going to give us exactly what we asked for. Don't forget to format this into a percentage because that is exactly what we want to see. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So um, here we go. So let's just verify something here. Complaints. Okay, that is good. So if you look at it now, the result is fine. I love it. It's good. So if we choose 2016, what happens? We say blank. Why is it showing us blank? It's showing us blank and uh, you might be thinking like, of course, we have tried to use error handling here to handle errors. Yes, of course, it is working. No error here. And as well, right here, it should definitely return 0% if there is some kind of um, division by zero. And I'm going to tell you firsthand that there is no division by zero. So what is the problem? Let us know and see how we can solve them. Okay. Now, in 2016, we have data and it's displaying here. Can you see? But based on the calculation we're trying to do here, before we can see year over year change, there must be two years. And now it's one single year, which is 2016. So if I make a choice of choosing this particular 2017 now, so it's now actually doing our year over year change between 2017 and 2016. So for that, it's working well. But if I have this one selected, no. So how can we display 0.00% if there is no previous years? That is what you should be thinking about. Okay, let's do it. So going over here again, sorry, um, click on this. Okay, fine. Going over here, we scroll down. So instead of us to return this over here, we can actually store this into a variable. So this variable will be called um, underscore result equals. So we've stored all of this code inside underscore result. So we can now come down here. So we can return it here. Return. Oh, sorry. Uh, you might see an error for that. Don't worry. I just mistakenly hit the enter key. So don't bother about the error you have on the screen. So under the return here, we're going to use the if function to check if underscore result here is not blank and as you can see it was blank right so if it is not blank you're going to use this this means not then we use blank so if it is not blank we want to return underscore result but if it means that is blank we want to return zero and uh, the next thing is to close and hit our enter 
this should be corrected. Okay, let's take a look at it. It has fixed that for us. Can you see it now? We have it fixed, 0%. So we just have to format it to percentage. Then we go back, it's good. Can you see it now? This is for compliance SLA year over year change. I'm gonna keep this right here. So we need to create one more and this one more is gonna be for non-compliance and we don't have to do that from the scratch. You should have gotten the whole understanding from here. Let's go into here and we're gonna copy this one and uh, create a new measure, paste it in and make just a few changes, that is all. So if I paste it here, now, Inside here, I'm going to put none. So non-compliance as a year over year change. So over here, I'm going to put none for where I have current. None. If I like, I put that underscore. So over the previous one, or previous one will carry none as well. None underscore. So just make a change like that. So we go down to here. So we just fix none here. We do the same thing over here. And uh, finally, I think it's here, non underscore. So we have just created for our non-compliance and uh, we are good to go, right? So we're not. So over here, instead of we to show compliance as L here, we just want to show what? We want to show non-compliance SLA, which is this one here. And over here, we want to say the same thing. So non-compliance. SLA. That is all the changes we need to make. So we hit our enter key and we format this to a percentage that will definitely give us what we're looking for. Okay, once done, let us move this into a card. Oh, sorry. We are putting the, that on the previous one. We should create something new. So here we go, nicely done. So one error you might encounter is this. Let me show you what the error is. If we go back here, and now we go to this particular part here, and you'll be thinking like, why do I have to you know, put non-compliance SL here when I already have it stored in my variable? What, why, what if I just use this variable here? What is gonna happen? It's gonna work, of course, because it's the same thing over here. So. Let's try it and see what it's going to give us and um, we'll see if we need to avoid it or not. So underscore non-compliance. So if I hit my enter key, you're going to see that this is not going to work. So I would definitely go down here. So can you see? So what this tells us is that you cannot actually reference your variable that you have declared inside the calculate function is what if what you want to do is to change the filter context, right? So we want to go back by one year. So we can't use the already declared variable. Instead, we use what we store inside that variable that is going to be our non-compliance that is actually a measure originally itself. You get it right now? So with this, we can actually go back. Okay, I think it has already been formatted. Go back here and see the result is back. 100% back. So if we change to 2016 now, we are seeing nothing because there is no year over year change. All right, we have just some kind of um, created this particular part year over year change and this one as well. So what about this? We have more work to put into this to get this done. Let's get into it. Let us create a measure that add caption or commentary, it depends on what you want to call it, 
for us to see what year is creating our year over year change and what is the percentage and the value equivalent. Okay, now I'm going to create a new measure over here. So new measure. So this one, I'm going to call it compliance comment or caption or whatever. So name it whatever you like. So the very first thing I'm going to do now, this is going to be something different from what we have done before. So we want to identify what is selected from the slicer. So if 20, 20 is selected from the slicer, we want to store it under selected year as a measure. You get it right now. And uh, for the previous year before the is year, we are going to use another function to determine what year is selected. That will definitely be uh, the max function and the calculate function will definitely do that for us so because we want to offset by one to see what is the year before this year. So all that to create our commentary. Okay, to go by it now, we create a variable underscore um, selected year over here. So now we use selected value is a function. Selected value help us to see what is selected from a particular or uh, maybe slicer or any maybe even when we hover over something we can use that as well so it has a lot of functionalities so for now we're going to use the calendar and inside the calendar we use the year so we can type in the year here so we have it then we close it so if we want to see the if, uh, if what this one will return, we can just do normal return to see the behavior. So we want to return underscore selected. And if I hit my enter key, we can push this into a card to see what would be the end result. So now here is 2016. If I select 2020, we can see we have 2020 right here. Beautiful. So we have done that. The next thing now is to see uh, what is next. So we create another variable. So this variable would be the percentage of compliance SLA, which is this particular one. We want to start it. So we just do this. PCT. So that is percentage uh, of compliance SLA. So equals here, we can do this and uh, we go to that. Here is it. Um, now I think is this one here. So now we have done that. The next thing now is for me to get this created. So for this next one, we're going to write more of text than this one. I would love to leave a comment here. So with these two dashes, so I can just say this measure extract the previous year. So I'll create a variable. I'll call it selected here. Um, yeah. Sorry, let me call this one max year. Max year. So equals. We use the max function. So with the max function, we call the year from our calendar. So we close it. So we go down and uh, we create another variable. So inside this variable, we call it underscore. So we forgot the underscore right here. So we call this one underscore back by one year. 
back by one year. So I'm gonna use my calculate function to calculate max year. So using the calendar. So we go ahead and close this, that is the expression for the filter. So we want to say uh, where the year in our calendar is equal to our underscore max year. So here we go. I would like to return this to see what it is we have return underscore back by one year now it's still returning 2020 so what if i put minus here so i'm gonna do minus one if i hit my enter key let's see what we have So 2019, can you see it now? Then this particular part here would have as our previous year, while this one would have ours as our current year from selection. You get it? So let's get it now to this next level. So next thing now is to create um, a new variable and uh, we're going to call this one our variable result one. So if you're going to have more than one result to display by and by before the final result, always indicate one, two, three, or something that will make the first variable to be different because you can't use same variable name in one single measure. So now variable underscore result one. Okay, inside variable underscore result one, what we're going to do is to say if um, underscore back by one year is not blank, is not blank, then we want you to give us that back by one year, which is 2017, uh, right? Whatever is selected. Else, we want to see blank. You get it? So we can go ahead and have this closed. So can decide to format it this way to keep things very simple. Oh, sorry, I mistakenly hit my enter key. I will see an error. We don't need to keep this error. We have to get this error off, but let's go into the next one. So I would love to leave comment here. So this one is going to be this. We'll give the number difference on year, year over year change. So we're going to create another measure here, and this measure will be our previous compliance year over year change, but we don't want it in percentage. We have already stored the percentage here. You get it? So now what we want is the actual value, not the percentage. So underscore. So it will be previous. Compliance year over year change. So equals, how do we calculate that? Now we're going to do that by the calculate function. So calculate. So a calculate function will do uh, a compliance SLA. So the previous year, I'm going to use same period last year. 
it works. I told you we can use same period last year or date add and offset by one year. So we bring our date here. That will be this. So now we can just go ahead and have this closed. Then have our calculate closed. Then we go down one more. We need to create another variable. So I might, I, I know it's complex, it's actually confusing a little bit, but just take it slow, pause it, go back, you know, rewatch again, you'll get exactly what I'm doing right here. So this one will be current. Current um, compliance. SLA, so will be equals, we store this particular compliance SLA here. So we go down, this one will be another variable that will store the results we have gotten from those two variables. So we can leave a comment here as well. Okay, now this one will be the results. So I'm going to create another variable here. I'll call this result two. So in this result two, what we're going to do right here is just to say, okay, uh, underscore current, current SLA minus underscore previous. So, you know, we have lots of them right here. We need to know which one we want. So after you might have done this, please try to verify what you're trying to do. So we want to actually subtract this particular current Compliance SLA, which is this one, from the previous compliance SL uh, compliance, uh, compliance SLA year over year change, which is this one, and uh, is correct. We have just stored the result over here. We're gonna use those results we are storing in here. So before we go further, let us look at the end result from here for you to understand what we are trying to drive at. So over here it says. Uh, 4,193 is the total non-compliance SLA changes between 2020 and 2029, which is 32.52% year-over-year change. And under the compliance, we have almost the same thing, but different values, but same year selected. So this is exactly what we're about to create. So if we go over to the one we're actually creating, we have done all the necessary thing, so it is time for we to actually get the right caption in. So the next thing now is for we to return. So under the return here, so under the return, what we're going to do now is to first of all use format. So format is what helps you to format, you know, uh, your number within text or within number within string because we cannot use this particular part to format to a dollar or comma separator. So we have to use a function that will definitely do that for us. And what are we trying to format? We're trying to format the value and that value is going to be this particular result two here. Where the heck is it? This result two. So we're going to say underscore result two. So result two is what gives us the difference in number, not in percentage. So we're gonna say result two now, comma is same format. How do we want to format it? So inside of a quotation, you use the hash, comma, and there are two hashes, and you close the double quotation, you close this, right? Then we want to actually concatenate it with some text. So using this ampersand, and we use this double quotation. 
the next thing is to put in the text. We want to say, um, maybe it's 10,000. We want to say 10,000 is the total compliance SLA changes between. So I'm going to put is the, so in small letter, is the total compliance SLA changes um, between so when we get to between we stop we want to put the year so which is selected year so if we go up now we have to look at what variable we are going to use now so selected year is this one can you see it? This is the selected year. And the next one is actually this particular one right here, which is back by one year is another one we're going to use. So we come down here, we do underscore, sorry, ampersand and underscore selected year. So which means our selected year now is whatever is selected inside our slicer that is stored inside here you get it so i would love to do indention indentation so we do another concatenation so space and uh, we use and so with this and we're going to connect it to the previous year so which is another one so now we have to close this first under ampersand here so this time around underscore back by one year which is this very one here that is the previous year if we are in 2020 we want to see 2019 inside here inside selected year we selected 2020 so back by one year gives us 2019 that is exactly what we want to see so now we do under concatenation with the text so we do just which is. So what we want to show in which is, we want to actually show the percentage year to year to year or change forever. So now we do the ampersand here. So right now we're going to do format again. So with the format, what we want to format is actually underscore percentage of compliance here. So you have to remember all this. So instead of doing that, I think I would rather prefer using the format in the next line. So for you to see exactly what I'm doing. So comma for the format, inside of quotation, we do 0, 0.00 if we want to have two decimal places. So we're going to do um, 0. 0, 0. So if you want to see one decimal place, just one zero is okay. You put your percentage, but now I want to see the two decimal places. So we go ahead and have our percentage and you close, you close this. So we concatenate this here. Now we do the ampersand. So year over year change. So year over year change. We go ahead and close this. So now, once we hit our enter key, we are almost set. So we're gonna come back right here to fix something, but let's see what the result look like. Something huge. We have to make sure we expand it. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller to read. Let's go with 30. Okay, nicely done. So let us look at this. Based on what is selected from here, it's 2020. So it says 3,405 is the total compliance SLA changes between 2020 and 2019. So we need to have space here. So which is current, which is 33.52% 3, year over year change. So we need spaces between here. So let's quickly go ahead and take care of that first, then come back and fix something again. So where don't we have those? Okay, here there is, there is. So here we need to give space. 
So what uh, where again there should be space here. So always put your text between spaces, not exactly you type immediately you type your double quotation. No, you have text, no, you need to put a space. So if I hit my enter key right now, it should have you know get every part of them fixed for me. Let's take a look at it. Now it's correct. So we have actual space on them. So now what happens if I select 2016? If I select 2016, can you see what happens here? It doesn't give me something that makes a lot of sense. It says uh, it's returning the same value. Yes, of course, it's returning the value for us. So it's returning the same value that we actually have right here, which is this very one right here. So it's saying it's the total compliance sales because we are doing for compliance. And um, let's see. So, but doing that only shows what we have selected from here and that shows zero percent here and it doesn't show the previous year before 2016 and we don't have that so how do we handle this and again if we deselect we don't have anything selected it returns something similar to it so how do we handle all of this first of all we want to disallow the end user from having multiple selection so over there you go here and you choose single selection so it only fix it to a particular one or we can decide to select anyone we want to select. So right now is actually correct. 2017 is our selection and this 2016 is the previous one. But if we have 2016 selected, the whole thing get messed up. It's not really correct. So how do we fix this? So if this is the case, we don't want to display any of this here. We want to show something else. Let's get back. So scroll all the way down. So instead of us to just return here, so we want to actually, you know, uh, use if condition to condition what we want to show. So how do we go about it? So we're gonna say if, and um, we're gonna do underscore our previous year, which is this one, previous compliance year over year change here, if it is not blank. If it is not blank, then what we want to do, we want to go ahead and, uh, sorry, if it is blank, if it is blank, we want to do something. Uh, I think we have two options. So if it is not blank, we want to show all of this. We want to show all of this. That is if it is not blank. Because if I have my comma here, it shows if the result is true, we want to show all of this. So if at all it is blank, comma, if the result is false, what we want to display now is going to be this. Um, inside a book quotation, we want to say underscore. Um, yeah. So I think before double quotation, we do underscore selected year, selected year from the slicer. So we do concatenation. So space i said when you put in your double quotation you the first one opened you give a space so i'm gonna say is the uh total okay okay is it has no previous right yeah? has no previous year comma selects another year to see results. So, I don't know, I'm not really good at English. You can definitely decide to customize it the way you want. But for now, I think we are cool with this. So I'm gonna close this and uh, shift enter, we we'll close our if. Then by the time we hit our enter key right now and commit this, it will definitely change this instead of showing incorrect result. So we can go all the way back to look at this. So you can see, 2016 has no previous year. Select another year to see a result. So let's do that. 2017. And we have it populated for us the way we want it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So we created this one for compliance, uh, compliance SLA. So which is this particular one here. So what we do now is to keep it over here. And I'm gonna come here and just do a copy of it. 
and uh, this copy will be moved down for this particular one then we have to go over here to copy this code and make changes to it that is all we don't have to do it over again just make a little changes to this one and we're good to go so i'm gonna paste this one in here so i scroll up so instead of compliance we're gonna put in here non-compliance so all i'm gonna change right now is this one here none compliance sla so we need a percentage one here we go so if i come over here this is okay yes step by step oh uh, you can change this i'm not going to take my time to change all of this so you can start to change this i'm going to change the most important thing right here so let me go over here we're still going to leave this one yes so here i'm going to use non compliance Here we go. Scroll down a bit. I think uh, for now that is all we need to do. So we've changed. I'm going to hit my enter key. So we should see a different result entirely. So if you are doing this for a client or for your boss, you want maybe he might want to go back to the back end and see what is going on right there. You would have to change all the variables we have written, change the name to match exactly what we are doing right here because this most of these names we have here matches the previous one. But for we to keep the video short, we just want to do this. Let us look at the result. Um, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and change it from this to the down one. Let's go with this. So non-compliance, the one with commentary, that is it, this one. So which means we have an error somewhere, we need to fix that. What could that be? So let's scroll down, let's scroll down, okay, okay, over here. So current compliance SLA. We need to use the non. Non compliance. Let's see. So this here shouldn't be the percentage. It should be just non-compliance. So we're going to take this F and take non-compliance SLA. So if we're doing this from the scratch, it's going to take time. So we just have to just fix the right measures here. And uh, we're going to have exactly what we want. So now it has been fixed for us. And as you can see, we have it fixed. So 904. We'll have 960 over here, 19.33 as the year over year change. And that is going to match exactly what we have here. This one would match this exactly. So we have done this and we are doing the. So let us format this one. I think uh, we're bringing this one down while this one goes up. Um, okay, it's correct this way. No, yeah, this one is up. She's going to be up here. While this one is coming here, then this is actually going to be our compliance and our non-compliance. So we switch it. Okay. <coughs> all right. So first of all, let us take care of our values and percentages. So this is actually non-compliance and non-compliance right here. We don't actually want the, um, what I call it? We don't want the category labels so we've turned them off so next thing now is to some kind of let's bring this one a bit down right here okay on this one we have to change the size so we're going to do 17 for that 17 here so this is what we want to show can make it a bit smaller 
and uh, it's gonna be right here. So I wanna change the color to this color and the values colors should be the same color, which is this color here. And if I go to my size and style, I turn off the background we have in it. So we don't want no background for them. So for this one here as well, I'm going to keep it at 17. So we we'll we'll turn off the category label. All right, so we have those two. The next thing we need to do now is that we want to change this one to one of the colors on our template here, which is this very color. So on our background, so we can right click to pick the same color we have used right here. So go ahead to the one you have downloaded, pick the color and uh, make sure you use the same color to match your background. So don't invent different colors. It's not going to be healthy. So this is what we want to use. So if I choose to use the same color over here, what I'll do is to actually make the color to be some kind of darker for it to show because this font um sorry the size of the this thing is too small so i'm gonna bring this down to still stay within the color so i'm using this instead okay that is cool all right the next one is actually getting this one ready to be where it should be so i'm gonna select both of them and uh, and format them at once so the font size should be 15. So we're going to change to a different one. So let's go with something like this. I think we can go with something lighter. Let's see this one. All right, this one is cool. So we're going to turn off the category label as well. So here we have this. So we need to have something that will identify uh, both of them. So I'm going to take this one and select this one too. Then I'm going to move it up to match this particular part here. Cool. Then I'll select this one, select this, select this, I'll move it. So here is my non-compliance and here is my compliance. Okay, the next thing we're going to do right now is to create a line chart. And this line chart, what it's going to do is to actually show the compliance and uh, non-compliance. But I want to create a switch between them. So ordinarily, what I will need to do for the, my x-axis is to get my ear sorry, my month rather. So my month, which is the month name. And uh, under the Y axis, we're gonna choose to see for now, let's go to our measure table. We just go for uh, compliance, SLA, and uh, it's showing the trend. This is not the kind of chart we wanna use. So we can change this. And what I wanna show is not even the value, but the percentage. So I can just go ahead and switch it to the percentage right here. So we're looking for the percentage. Where could that be? Uh, compliance year over year change. No, no more percentage of it. Yeah. So here is it. So we have it. 
this is what it is. So if you remember that now, here we have this created. This is what we have just used. But this is not exactly what we want to do. Instead, we are going to create something that will make us to switch between this one and the other one. So that will definitely take us to here where we can choose the our parameter, which is the field parameter. So with the field parameter, our Power BI has just, or Microsoft has just saved us from writing a measure to have this done. But sometimes, if we still want to do something much more advanced, you have to use your um, use DAX to control it. But for now, we don't need that. Over here, I'm going to say select um, measure, selected measure, switch measure rather, switch measures. So inside this box is where we're going to put in the measure we want to use. So compliance, not year over year, but I want to just get the console SLA compliance percentage and SLA non-compliant percentage. So we choose this and we choose this. You get it? So I'll go ahead and hit create. It's going to actually add a slicer for me. And the new table will be inserted here automatically. Give it some time. Okay, here we have it. I will definitely go ahead and make this one small. Come over here. I want to select this header here, turn it off. We don't need that. Settings here, we want to use tile. And uh, for the selection type, we want to use single selection. Okay, once we have that done, we can just mix something like this, right? So we place it here, somewhere around here for now. For the time being, it's going to be here. So we fix it later after all. Then if we select this now, we can click here. And that will going to be on our Y axis, right? So click here switch from this one to our new created switchable measure so now we can play with it when we select this it changes to and it's giving us this our uh, sla non-compliance percentage by month so you want to click on this this is what we have so our chart is not exactly what we want to have let's change the chart type to something like this Okay, we want something like this, and we can control the color that we see right in this. But I'm going to leave that to later. So the next thing now is to show some KPIs right here. So we're going to go ahead and create those KPIs we want to show right in here. It's very simple and easy. So I'm going to take off this title. We don't want to see the title. So over here... I'm going to just get to bring in uh, a card. And what this card will do, the card will show what is switching between these two uh, slicer. This slicer we have here. So I'm going to go over here and uh, bring it this in. This is the percentage we have from there. So I don't want the category label. I turn that off. So every single time we make a change, so we are seeing the percentage of what we have selected is the dark one. Then this is 51.45%, 42% rather. So you can see that. Okay. Now that we have done this, remember, you are seeing this. This is actually uh, affecting what we see over here and over here. So this one here. So if you are seeing difference between this percentage and the non-compliance percentage that we have here, just remember that we are doing year over year change. It's not actually the same thing. Do not expect to see the same percentage in 2018 with this one and this one. This is actually the previous year. Is doing that between the current year selected and the previous year. That is exactly how it works. So we have gotten this. The next thing now is for me to actually bring some couple of KPIs right here. How do we go about that? So let's just move this up and take a screenshot of it. Bring this way. 
and uh, click on this slider itself move it up okay so just this one alone you want to take a screenshot of this and go ahead and create our background and come back and fix things right so we select the area If you can't see the area to select from here, what you'll do, let's cancel this. So just make sure you have nothing selected. When you have something selected, you see the formatting. So just select it and have nothing, none of the charts or cards are selected. Then go over to canvas settings here and go to vertical alignment. Choose the bot, choose the middle instead of top. Now you now have this line here that you can actually trace when you want to take your screenshot. So click over here, new now. Search for snippet tool on your windows. You're going to find it, then use it to take a screenshot of this. So I'm going to start from here. So you can see where it stopped. So always try as much as you could to follow accordingly. So I'm going to save it somewhere I can remember. So I'll just click on save. And now we can delete this one. Let's get back to where we want to get it from. So previously we have created this one. What I'll do is just to double it. So duplicate this one here. So on the duplicate, I don't want to see, um, okay, I want to keep this one, but actually what we want to do now is something a bit different. I'm going to take this off, take this off and um, I'll go ahead and bring in our new uh, picture. So go here, this device. I will go ahead and uh, search for it. So we have it. So you must have known what I'm trying to do. Just resize to cover everything here. Okay, once we have this, the next thing we're going to do is to send it to back. Send Send to back. We can't see it, right? I'm clicking on this one. This one covers it. I want to send this one to back as well. Send this one to back. Send to back. Now I'm seeing this one. I don't want to see this one. We don't need it. So um, for this one here, all I'm going to do now is to actually click on all of them and drag them down. So on this one, I'm just going to make it a bit smaller for now. Keep it somewhere around here. So let's select all of them. So go to the top here. So we're gonna do 532. That is 5.32. We do that by 4.09. So this is what we need. So the next thing to do now is to some kind of you know make them to be well aligned here. So bring them one by one here. Okay. So I can just click. I go to align. So we go to uh, distribute horizontally. And uh, when we distribute vertically, that will make it the top and the top be the same equal size and the bottom. Or you can actually do top right here to fix that for you. And if we release it, this is what we have, and this is exactly what we want to have. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to bring those icons here and fix those icons right in the middle of it. So we get this icon as well. We fix it right here. So we get this icon. No, we don't need this icon. We don't need this icon as well. So we're going to put a different icon. So if I come over to this one here, I have one of the icons to be used in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop it. So paste it over here and the icon will be over here. So we have one icon left. So we can go ahead and look for the icon. So let me go to insert and uh, find the icon in our... Let's look for the icon. Image. 
so the icon is not here where could we find the icon let's go to download so we should see the icon here somewhere around here okay not here let's so this is the icon we are looking for so i've seen it so i can go ahead and locate it right now so you have it on your own this thing i'm gonna put it right there for you so let's go ahead and uh, search for a boy so here we go so this icon so all i have to do is to duplicate it and make this one small then bring the smaller one over here So duplicate on that one again of this small one then move it over to this side that would have created exactly what we want for us so next thing we can do is to some kind of select all of them and uh, we group them together so if you can find a group icon you can use it but for now this is what we want so after that we can just go ahead and ctrl d to double this and make it this way then make it a bit smaller something like this would be cool so we bring it over here and uh, what we want to do is to change the color so make the size to not be too much so you can see it's the same color it doesn't show up what we're going to do right now is to come over here go here and go to more Then we decide to just bring this down so this will reflect over here click on ok and this is what we want exactly so put it in the middle just like this right so i'm gonna move this up a little bit so ctrl d we duplicate it and we have this one over here then and this so finally click on this one and select the eyedropper select this color go over here select more colors then bring it down to create a dark version of it nicely done then we do the same thing to this one we need a darker version of it so first of all we select the color itself we go over here we select more colors we create a dark version of it so once you're satiated with the dark version of it just like this one you can compare this the color between this and this and see if this one will reflect when it's on top of it nicely done so finally we create dark version of this one so we just go to more colors so bring it down so if you are saturated with its dark version go ahead and click on ok so i'm gonna click on hold my control key and uh, select all of them go to shape format align and align top that is better okay now what is left let's see so if you look at this, it's not in the middle of it. So let's see if we select this bot and uh, we go over to here. We select this, we do center. You can see it has centralized it. So you can do that to all of them. Just do it to make sure you have it in the middle. Don't guess it if you know you can actually do these two clicks and uh, have it well aligned for you. So why would you guess if this is correct or not? So nicely done. So we have done this. Okay, the next thing to do now is um, this very one we copied, which is this one here. So I'm going to put it over to this side like this and uh, leave this top space for my, uh, what I call it? Should I call it my, yeah, my title. So I'm going to use this one to cover to this end here. And I'm going to bring it down to this level. So once we have done that, that is good. We duplicate it. So we bring this over to this end. So when, once you see this horizontal and vertical line, so you know that it's correct, it's well aligned. So here we go. This is a space between the two of them, like this is cool. So I'm gonna have to bring this one all the way down. Here we go. So remove this. 
So we'll create the space. So for the top, this is the horizontal line that shows that we are on the same level. So once we have done this, we are really cool. So for that, the reflection I have here is something I want to control. Insert a new one, and I'm going to select white. So I have more white reflection over the side. So I can change the angle myself. So once you do this, you can see the angle here. So if I want to do the same thing, I can do this angle to be changed over here. So this is it. So you see the darker one and the lighter one will come here. Just create this to make your dashboard to look a little bit different than what you have been seeing on the internet. Okay, now we have done this. The next thing I'm going to do right now is to actually make sure I some kind of click on the template itself and uh, bring it forward. Bring to front. So when I bring this to front, I want to do something. I'll go over here, go to shapes and uh, click on this. So. So we create this color here. And uh, first of all, I'll turn off this. I'm ready to duplicate it and I'll bring this one over here. So, nicely done. I can now send this one to back. Oh, for now, we don't even need the help of this one any longer, so we can delete it. So we're left with this. So the very first thing I'm going to do is to change the color of this one. I want to change the color to this very color here. So this one should be using a red color, but the red color is not found. I want this particular red color to match my value. So quickly, I'm going to go back to the dashboard we are creating, which is this one here. This color I've used for this particular text is what I'm going to use. So I'll go over to the colored value here, come here, go to more colors, and I'll copy the hex code as well. So quickly match down to where we are. So I will paste in the color I've just copied. So paste in the hex code. So do OK. So this is all we have to do over here. So the next thing is for we to match up straight to, you know, our Power BI environment. So what if I make it a bit like this? I want something thick. OK. So file. Export and PNG. Select the environment where you want to have it in. So, so this one will be background two or two. So we save it. We say just this one. Now we go to Power BI. So click out and uh, go over to here, select and go and pick it up. So we put this on 100%. So we have this. It's not really pretty fine now, until we just decide to get off all those backgrounds that are not making it cool. So we have something like this. For this one, let's use white. So we use white over this one as well. It shows more than showing that color. So it's taking shape, nicely done. So over here, um, what if I go with, okay, let's stick it at this level. So we have this and now let us make this one look more beautiful. So the very first thing I'm going to do is to come over here, um, turn off the background we have on it, it's turned off. So quickly we go for the X axis, you know, this is the bottom part. So we choose the font that would definitely make it, sh yeah, that is it. So we turn off the title itself, we don't want it. So for the Y axis, we want it, but we don't want the 
um, title. So we turn off the title. We leave the white axis the way it is. So we don't ball it. So we can just make it this way. And the next thing now is for you to actually go down and uh, you find the line here. So here is the line. If you scroll down, you see in this smooth line. So choose the smooth line. It look more beautiful. Can you see that? Then with that, we are almost right there. So the next thing we're going to do now is to select this one here and uh, go here, then choose to put off the background. So we have this. So I will definitely go over here and bring it down a little bit. Something like this, because I want to have the title over here. So the title will be decided by a measure. So because we're going to make it dynamic. So turn off this one, no background for it. And uh, for this one here, go to the value. So once you get to the value, you'll see background. So come here and choose this here. Let's choose this background, something like this. And uh, for the font type, let's select a bolder font. That will pop out very well. So all we have to do is to just make sure it shows what we have, shows everything like this. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So once we are satiated with this, that is beautiful. Now we need to create a title for it over here. So for this one, I will definitely change the color a bit. Um, where can I go? So let's go with something like this. Let's lay down. So I'm not convinced with this color. What if I change the color to this color here? So what we need to do is just to pick up the color code over from here. Just come here. We pick it up. We head back here. And now we are here. So we go to the line. Open the line and go for where you have the color. So choose to use this color over here. Okay. Once you have done that, we want to reduce the um the transparency of this one so we don't want it the way it is right now let's do that where could we find that to control it so shade so you can see you can see it's gone but we just want to keep something like this something light when you do it this way you're going to have something like this but we don't want this so we just want something lighter more light than this would be this so i think i respect this most so let's keep this like this so it's okay so the very first thing we're going to do again is so is to some kind of go over to here and uh now we can select the table that actually created this one which is uh this here so as you can see our um, compliance, SLA compliance is zero. Our SLA non-compliance is one. So we're going to use this to create our dynamic, you know, title. So zero and one. Compliance, zero, non-compliance, one. Let's get back. So now we create a new measure. So we call it our title, or uh, let's call it month or title month. So title month. So quickly, we want to use selected value to ch check what is being selected. And uh, that is going to be where we have zero for compliance and one for non-compliance. So the name is actually, you know, um, selected measure, right? So let's do that. So first of all, we create a variable right here. So underscore selected measure. So what we're going to do is to use what? Is to use the selected value. Selected value here to check what is being selected. 
So we check selected measure. Um, yeah, selected measure. We have the field, we have the order, and we have the measure. So what we are using now is actually the order, which is the way it's been arranged. So the order is this one. We choose that. So once we have chosen this one, the next thing is for we to return and uh, get to create what we want. So over here, we return. And under our return here, we're going to say if underscore selected measure is equal to zero. Then if that is the case, we want to see our monthly SLA compliance trend. So it's going to be monthly SLA compliance trend. So otherwise, so I can just copy this one to avoid typing again. So can can just copy this one. So we we'll close this. Otherwise, paste this in, close it, and uh, we are going to say is monthly non. So monthly SLA non compliance. Non compliance. So we have the title created. So it's time to bring the title in. So let's get down to here. So we're gonna create a new measure. So let's get this one here. Copy, sorry, we've, we've created a new measure. Uh, we're gonna create a new card I wanted to say. So just duplicate this card here, bring it over here, take it off and bring in our title. So now we have the title here. Just make it fit into here. So can you see this now? So when I switch. So monthly SLA compliance trend. So you see, this is exactly what it is that we're trying to do. So I can decide to bring it beneath this one. If that's going to make it much more Oh, cool. We can do this. Keep it over here. So when we select, it changes dynamically on all of that. Okay. What do we want to have here? So over here, we want to have our total ticket. So which is going to be this one, this value here. So numbers of tickets, we need to have it. Let's remove the, uh, sorry, let's remove the background and uh, make it a bit smaller. So we're gonna change this one to 20. That is what we want to do. We go over to the value. So we make the value to be 20. So we go over to the call out, uh, sorry, to the category label. We turn it off and uh, the color should be white. That will appear very well here. So we make it fitted into this particular part, just like this. So once we have done that, we can just copy and paste it and uh, remove this and put it over here. So paste in your one, move it and put it all over here, right? So the last one, we move it and have it on this particular part. So now the next one is going to be our resolution uh, time, which is the average resolution time. That is what we want to have right here. So we have the average resolution time. So we hover over it, it gives you. So here we go, take it off and put it in here. So the next one is the total, you know, um, total, what do I call it? Total agent. So for total agent, I want to go ahead and locate where I have that. Do we have that calculated already? So I'm not really sure if we have that. So we need to create a new measure that calculates that for us. New measure. So we calculate numbers of agents. So I can use hash row agents. So distinct count. Distinct count, we count uh, agent ID on our ticket table. Here we have it. 
So once we hit our enter, it will give us the numbers of agents that we have. Then we can drag it into this particular one right here. So we have 50 of them. And the last one is going to be average age. So we have already our average age calculated, I presume. So let us look for that to see. Um, do we have that? So we can make a search here to see age. Let's see how many average we have. So we don't have um, average age, so we're going to create that. So now when we create that, we're going to push it into this one. That means we have to deselect what we have here. And now we create a new measure for average age. So for the average age, all we just want to do is just to average the age column that is sitting in our you know, agent table. So here is going to be average age equals average. So age is sitting in the age um, in the IT, in the agent table. So we we'll close, and this is going to give us the average age of the agents. So now we push this in. The average age is 38, so I want to remove the extra decimal it has, so we don't want points, so we just want to put that of 38. So now we have it, 38. So now we don't have any um, title for them, so we want to create those titles ourselves. How do we do that? So I can just copy this one here, it's a text box, we can copy and actually create them. Oh, it's not something very big. So you can just paste it right here and you see. Okay, we have it right here. So you can see uh, those ones will be good on white because they will appear very well on this particular uh, background we have on them. So while this one will go for black, so always do that. So we have just gotten the title right here is the total ticket, average resolution time, total agents and average age, you know, and all of that. So we have this. What is next? We just have to make sure we see, um, uh, we show another chart here. So let's select this chart, bring it down here. Uh, if we go to the data view or the uh, table view rather, so we can hit to our hit the ticket table. So we have this particular column that is priority. So priority, priority of the tickets is going to be high. We can have low, mid and uh, unassigned. So this is what we want to use. And it's going to be very dynamic based on what is selected from here. So which means first of all, we go over to our Y axis, our X axis rather. Our X axis, we come here, we select the priority, right? So for the Y axis, we're going to go ahead and choose from our switch measure, which is this one. So whatever changes we have here will reflect right here, right? So we don't actually want to see this title. We want to turn it off and create our own title. It's very simple and easy to create. So all we have to do is to copy this very one here and uh, copy and paste it. Then move it down to this particular part. I'm going to put it in the middle. I think it will be more OK if I have it in the middle. So let me just bring this one down. So quickly, let me give the same format I have from here. Just copy. So copy the format and uh, let's see if it will definitely work over here. I'm not really sure of that. Okay, it does, but we don't want the Y axis. Let's, um, this Y axis here, let's go ahead and turn it off. So we go here, turn it off, and that is gone. So for this one, we can keep monthly as early non-compliance. We have to change it. So definitely we go to the title here, we copy this whole title, and then we create a new one. So all we just want to change is the title name, and instead of monthly, we use our priority. So we paste in the new one we've copied. So title here will not be month again. I don't know if I got this right. 
I'm um, thinking. Nope. Priority. Mm, I think it's right. Or whatever. So just correct it. So we're not we're not gonna show months here. So here will be um SLA compliance trend by by priority. So we remove this one as well. We put by here. So here is gonna be by prio right here as well so we're good to go we hit the enter so we change this one for the new one we've just created so let's swap it So we bring this one down over here. That is good. So this one here, I want to make the color to look much more fancier than this, right? So what am I going to do? Let me go over to, um, I'm going to go over to here and copy the color I'm using right here for my lower color. So we go to the line. So we copy the same color here. We copy it. And uh, I'm going to click on this one. Scroll down. Hit the FX. So we're not using row. We're using gradient. So we don't use, we don't want to use count. Um, I'm going to go by. Well, okay. Um, I think based on what you are using, it will not work. Let us just use one single color. Which is going to be this particular color we have right here so we have it so this is exactly what it is so we are almost there so for this one we want to put up the um data label so we search for it and uh, we put it and this is what we have over here but we don't want to put a data label here on the line chart it's not going to look beautiful so we have it this way from the previous creation, we can just copy this particular one. Uh, I would love to copy all of this uh, right here. I'll copy this. I'll copy this, not to request it again. I'll copy this and I'll copy this one here. But before I do copy all of them, let me go back here and uh, first of all, remove my date here, my year here. I'm going to bring it back later after all though. So let's see. If I go over here now, I will definitely copy all of this. So copy from the previous one. If you have actually followed from the scratch and you have this one created already, you don't need to create this one over and over again. All it just needs to do is to copy and make a little changes to it and that is all. So we paste it. So don't synchronize. We don't want that. So use don't. So we have this right here. So instead of me to show this one, I'm going to bring my ear slicer. So we select the year from calendar. We choose the year. And uh, we don't want to see where it's selected all. We want to go down to where we can actually choose a single selection. So now here we go. So it's telling us that this has no. So here we are going to say filtered by year. So you make it go close to it. So in this one, this is what we want to show. Severity. So it's cool. So we can just make it to go closer to the previous one, which is this one right here. So we're good to go. So now, finally, we have just completed this one as well. And it's looking very, very good. So whenever we select from here, would actually take an impact in all our dashboard and we can now see and um, the management can actually make decision with this compared to what we have here just normal data of agent we can say nothing about this 
And now we transform this very ticket, you know, raw data into something very much insightful and well colorful design is what we have given the management to take decision with. So how about this? See you in the next one.